Hey, and welcome into another episode of Faithful Leaders. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. You know, uh, me, like a lot of leaders today, are growing weary at times. It's hard to be a leader. Our culture wants to cancel and remove Christian principles uh, from much of what we do. And I want to make the case that we stay rooted and planted firmly and continue to press on. So I was talking to a leader, Jessica, who wanted to press on with joy and do just that. Gotcha. Well, it makes a lot of sense for those of us who are Christians know we, we should be pressing on, but sometimes it can be hard. So tell me what was going on with Jessica. Well, Jessica wanted a way to remind herself of the work she was doing and why she was doing it. So we look to Galatians 6, 9 for the antidote to weariness and work. Here's what Paul says. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Now, if we read that carefully, we see that Paul is mingling a natural picture of harvesting, that is reaping the grain when it's fully ripe, with doing good to people. We want our work to be profitable. We want our work to benefit others and gain joy in doing it. And we want our work to glorify the Lord, honor him, and, and uh, serve his purposes. And we move and live and work every day to provide for ourselves and benefit others and honor the Lord. And as part of the curse, though, we see that our work takes blood take sweat and toil, and uh, the ground doesn't yield its full strength to us, and we, we run into things every day. And it's easy to want to give up and stop working when we don't see the hope for result. At times, uh, a natural revelation picture can help keep us going, like the reaping, like the sowing. If we look to a practical example from history, Thomas Edison didn't always know what the next step was going to be and what the result would be when he was trying to create the light bulb. He had to press on in the hope of discovery. It's often said that he failed 1,000 times before successfully inventing the prototype of the light bulb. And when a reporter asked him how it felt to fail 1,000 times, here's how Edison replied. I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention of 1,000 steps. And Edison's work was profitable, and it brought good to people. And so our spiritual work and our work day by day, we can take some lessons from this. It can be similar. But spiritual results are harder to see uh, and are not always knowable for us. When we show someone love uh, yet receive no thanks, does it make a difference? When we honor the Lord by speaking the truth or the gospel and are reviled for it, does it even matter? Well, of course it does. But Paul gives us the antidote to this and other work. Even if we can't see the result, we reap the fruit of a life lived in the spirit. In the previous verse, Galatians 6, 8, he uses the picture of a farmer doing work with his hands to drive the point home. He says, do not sow with your flesh, to your flesh. Instead, sow in the spirit. And then he continues in 6, 9 to give us that antidote. Do not grow weary. Continue in doing good. And so weariness in work often comes from our inability to see the fruitful outcome of labor. We become lazy in love, convincing ourselves small kindnesses don't matter, that going out of our way to help someone is a distraction to the real work we can see, and we just press on with gritting our teeth and frustration and oftentimes discouragement. The inexhaustible need of those around us can uh, overwhelm us at times and our hearts can grow cold and helpless. But the promises of God help us fight against giving up. And because God's promises um, are dependable, we can count on them and, and they will help us to not grow weary. Uh, so let's not give up. We'll reap a bountiful harvest and if we continue in God's spiritual work. And so what did Jessica do in light of this? She First, she wrote down promises from God's work next to her goals and objectives to remind herself why she did them and to remind herself of the source of her strength to do them while she was doing them. And secondly, she incorporated those promises into meetings she had with others in the workplace as a way to testify to what's good in the world and to encourage others in the meetings to do good work. That sounds like a good way to use scripture to address the stuff that's going on. So how did that turn out? Well, it really helped her out to see the work that she was doing, to rely on God's promises and, and not to give up and to persevere in those moments. And it helped others to do so as well, that uh, to realize that our spiritual work and our joy is not separate from the work of our hands, but hand in hand through it. And that that disposition of helping others, serving the Lord with joy amid suffering is, is doing good. So let's look for opportunities to do that, uh, that we have, and not to give up, and especially to other Christians, to encourage them with good words from the gospel that powers our obedience to show the love of Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
That's great. We want to encourage each other with scripture. And, and I love what you said about that. They're not separate. They, they walk hand in hand. So if you'd like to hear more stuff like this, um, make sure and subscribe below. And there's uh, some great content, practical and very spiritually minded, just like this today. So thanks again, Thomas, for, for sharing. Thanks. I want to encourage all the leaders to continue in the work. Do not give up, uh, even when you can't see the fruit and be faithful.